Today, I cut out camo stencils. I print more stencils. I attach stencils to a model. I do a little arithmetic. I use spray bombs. I use hand therapy putty. And I even do some freehand airbrushing. This episode is aimed at those who may not own an airbrush, but want to try and achieve a soft edge camouflage scheme using spray bombs and paper stencils. While the majority of this video is concerned with that topic, I will also cover other methods to achieve this. What you're seeing here is I'm using a paper stencil that I've calculated from the instruction sheet camouflage pattern. And what you can see what I'm doing is for each color, I've, I can make a mask. In this example, what I'm doing, since I've already painted in the previous episode an overall color of NATO green, I'm going to try and protect that using a stencil that is referencing that green color. So using my printer, my computer, and figuring out a percentage of how to get the right size of stencil, I'm able to have a soft edge camouflage pattern even though I don't own an airbrush. Now you should probably take more time attaching these paper stencils to the body of the model rather than the way I've done it because I'm just going to be breezing through this so I can get a nice little video up for anybody who's curious about how to do this. If I were doing it in a serious way, I would take more time with making sure that the distance between the stencil and the model is adequate and sufficient for it to not have any unnecessary overspray underneath the stencil. Normally with something like this pattern of a NATO tank or a German camouflage, for example, I usually just do freehand airbrushing. I find that that's the best way to get the results I'm after. But there are more ways to skin a fish than there is cats to throw around with the tail. In any case, you can also use this technique on other genre of model kits. For example, if you want to do World War II allied camouflage on, uh, say, a Spitfire, you can use this method using the kit's instructions to create paper stencils that you can use to create a soft edge for your camouflage pattern. One could also consider this as being a way to map out a pattern that can later be tweaked with an airbrush. So in a way, this is just a general sort of marking out of where the pattern is, and then you can come back in and perfect your edges should you wish to do so. Okay, so let's uh, move forward with this project, and if you have any comments, please leave them in the bleep bloop below. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my scanner. If you're wondering, that's a frogfish. I took that picture in the Philippines. Weird little creatures. Okay, so let's uh, do a preview. I want to 
want to uh, scan the whole page and I want the resolution to be 300. For some reason that seems to be a one to one ratio that seems to work. So uh, what we'll do is we will call this the Tamiya Leo 2 Camo Instructions. All right, and where do I want to save it? I want to save it. <clears throat> I'm going to save it to the Leo Part 4. All right, so scanning. All right, so there it is. Let's open it with uh, Adobe Photoshop. Right? And now I want to print it. I'm going to print one copy. Paper size, yeah, that's uh, way too big. Letter, all right. So we're going to print that. So there you go, we got our printout. So now what we gotta do is we gotta figure out how much more we have to increase this so that it'll fit the model kit. So this has got to get to this size. I've already done it once, but I just wanted to show you how I got there, okay? So what we gotta do, first of all, is measure the model kit and then measure uh, this printout and see what kind of percentage we have to increase the printout. So measuring that out, I have 134 millimeters or 13.4 centimeters. Okay, so right here, 13.4 centimeters. The body is 22 centimeters. So what we have to do is increase this printout to where this measurement here is 22 centimeters. So I'm gonna figure that out. I'll go on to the computer. Okay, so now that I've got my percentage of increase, which is, I'm just gonna call it 64 plus 100, I'm going to open up Photoshop, go back to the scan. Back in Photoshop. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print one. I'm going to print it on a bigger piece of paper, 11 by 17. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to change some of the print settings here. Go to... Uh, Oh, it's 11 by 14 is what I want, actually. All right. So I'm going to print one of those. Okay, so I think it's going to work. Let's uh, just print that out. Okay, so now that I've got my percentage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print it out on my printer. But I'm going to have to make a few changes. Uh, So you see here it says scaled print size, scale, so I got to go 164, and then that will give me, but I want to move it because I need the turret printout on this one. <clears throat> I already have the other stuff, so I'm just going to focus on that. So there you go. We've got 164. 
go on and print that out. Fingers crossed, it'll all work out. All right, so here's the printout. Now here's the turret. And you can see that it fits pretty much perfectly. The next job is to cut out each shape and then put it down with masking tape so it keeps it off the surface a little bit. And uh, that'll give you the soft edge using spray bombs. All right. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now, and this might seem really crazy, is because I still wanna age these wheels off of the tank, I need to put this in temporarily, the side uh, armor. I'm gonna I'm gonna take that off again to mount the wheels, to do some uh, mud aging inside here, and also to put the track in. It'll be easier to put the track in with these off. Now, most people probably won't do it this way, but this is the way I do it. And because what I gotta do is I gotta paint the sides as well as the top. So all these lines have to match up. So that's why I have to put these side pieces on now so I can get everything lined up properly and uh, still have a temporary gluing, like attachment. I don't wanna glue it on per se because it'll make a mess when I go to take it off. So I decided to just use some Tamiya masking tape here. And you can see where I'm going to be doing this stuff here that's on there now, that's going to be covering up the green. So I'm not too concerned about having tape there because it's going to get masked off anyways. All right? So that's what I'm doing here. All right. Now I'm gonna to have to make sure everything is underneath the stencil or mask because I don't want this tape to be showing outside of that. But I'm only gonna be concerned about shooting down for now. I'm not gonna shoot from the side because I wanna shoot 90 degrees perpendicular to everything. So now I've got to line this all up here. This might be slightly off, but it's good enough for what we're doing. So all this gets lined up. that but you see even here that needs to go up well maybe we can use that to our benefit there all right so that's got to come up there that's got to match with that step pad there roughly Everything needs to be perpendicular. All right. So that looks good there. Yeah. So now all this will get its color and everything will be lined up from the top. Roughly. Okay, you follow what I'm doing here? All right. I don't know what 
happen with me and my dad, eh? All right, like I say, this is mostly to be spraying straight down, like that. We don't wanna to go to the side at all. We just wanna go straight down. We gotta make sure everything is lined up properly. So, the first color, I believe, let's, uh, we'll go with the brown because the black will go over top of the brown. One thing I like to do when I do spray cans is I like to run it under hot water because that'll increase the pressure and that'll give you a smoother finish. You don't want to get it so hot that it explodes, of course. I'm just running under, under my hot water tap. And hopefully, you know, maybe a minute worth or two minutes. And it should be good. You can put it in maybe a, a cup. Or a little cup like this. And that'll help get the heating. All right, now with that done, the number one priority is make sure that you shake the can really well before you spray. And make sure you double check all your, all your stencils. I put a little plastic container underneath here to sort of give me a little bit more of a 90 degree angle here. So, let's go. This is the brown, by the way. TS62, natal brown. All right. So you just wanna build it up slowly. You don't wanna like blast a whole bunch on. Just build it up slowly. Give it a chance to sit out a little bit. Just take a 
a look. I think maybe we have to work on the front a little bit. Okay. So looking at it in the inside of the house, I should have probably secured this area better here. I should have secured this area better here for when I go to spray. And don't worry if there's any screw-ups we can always come back later and touch it up so next what we got to do is we got to cover up the brown the brown areas by cutting them out of our printed stencil and then we're gonna pray spray the uh, XF 69 needle black so this is what we've got left of our stencil here and what we'll do is we'll cut out the brown areas like this lighter shade here that's a brown area so we'll cut that out tape it down the same way we've done it uh, all the other ones and uh yeah bob's your uncle okay so you can see here how that looks And I'm making sure I cover up along the edge here so there's no paint getting sprayed into there. So, next up we gotta put a little bit of a brown here. <clears throat> so this is kind of a bit like a jigsaw puzzle, eh? So that piece will go there. So we'll just cut that out. So that would be the black, so that stays open. This piece gets put right there. Okay. There's some tape. back like that Okay, and then what I gotta do, I gotta cover that up so there's no overspray into that crack. There, so I'm gonna carry on with the rest of it and I'll be back. All right, so we're just about there. One more piece to cover up this little area here. I don't usually paint like this, so I might have done it a little bit differently than what I've done here. You might want to carry the stencil all the way down to the side if if that's the thing you're going to do. Like, But I'm going to show you how I, you can also do a soft edge camo like this 
with a different technique. And I'll use that on the side here and I'll show you how to do that. So I just gotta make sure everything is properly masked off. Any seams between the colors. I wanna make sure these things are down enough. So if I have to add more tape, I will. Now this is a lot of work compared to just using an airbrush, but it might be the only way you can do this with uh, spray bombs. Otherwise, you're not gonna get the intricate pattern and you're not gonna get the soft edge. Now, you could just mask everything off and then have a hard edge, but apparently this is a soft edge camel pattern. So this is how you're gonna have to go about it. Perhaps you have a different way that you find, but this is what I'm offering up. All right. So now that everything is in place, what I can do is just uh, do what I did before with the brown, just heat up the uh, Heat up the paint a little bit with some hot water. And then we'll spray this out with the natal black. There we go. All right. So just double checking everything. Voila. So let's just take a look and see what happened here. Well, it's not perfect. But you do have the soft edge. But yeah, there is there's some bleeding into the other areas. I probably could have taken more care with some of this, but I think that's about as good as you're gonna get with spray bombs, right? But like I say, you can come back in and touch this up if you want. You see the difference here? This is like where the masking tape was and it's a sharp edge. So that's like, I don't like this part here. Like there's too much, too much of a brown bleed there. So you might want to take more care when you go to mask mask off your green and you go to spray your brown just make sure that it's sealed off a little bit better but there you have it that's uh what i'm gonna do now what i can do is i can cut that stencil again here and come back in with the green 
But like if I had an airbrush, I would just psh, spray that green out. So there you go. Set that aside to dry. So yeah, you see here, this is the black stencil that was left over. What you can do is come back in here, put that down like that with masking tape, and then spray it with the green, and that should get rid of this. This area here is okay, I don't mind that. And this looks okay too, it's just, that area there shouldn't be like that. It should be a green, a solid green. So yeah, don't throw away your stencils because you can reuse them. Even these ones here that you've already used. Don't destroy them. All right. All right, so you can see, I've got this back on here. And I'll come back in with the green. So I just have to be really careful around here as far as uh, not getting any overlap there. I can't find my uh, stencil that I used over here, so we're just going to have to be very careful. <clears throat> so I sprayed it out again. And that's what we got now. So it's a little better. All right. So, you know, like with stuff like this, I should have maybe taken more time, make sure everything is properly, you know, down. But I wanted to just do this as a demonstration for y'all, how you can do it. Just take what I've shown you here and make it better. Because <laughs> this isn't normally how I would do this. I would use an airbrush to get my shapes. But like I say, you can always come back in with your, your stencils and redo any lines that you need to redo. And you have to remember that we're gonna be uh, aging this thing down pretty good, like weathering it. So a lot of this stuff will become a little bit less obvious just because of the dirt and grime that'll be on there. So there you go. So one thing I kind of thought about next time, if I were to do this, because this is the brown area here, I don't really need to spray brown here. So maybe think about that when you go to do yours, is just keep the brown color localized to the few areas that it will show up, right? Okay, so here we've got the side piece on, and we want to carry on with some camel. So another way we can do this, I'll show you. So another way you can do it is by using this kind of uh, putty. This is called therapy putty. And I've got some uh, extra firm gray here. Now I bought this on Amazon and they do sell it like, you know, like with model building supplies, different companies, they find something that is on the market and then they repackage it and charge you like twice as much. So this is sort of a putty that, you know, you can shape and it goes back like it'll move. So you have to kind of use it quickly in a way, but you can shape it and you can use this to create your camouflage pattern. Like what I'll do, for example, is 
I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff. I'll get back to you. So you can see here the pattern right there. So what we can do is by using this stuff here, we can uh, mask it off. So this is going to be in the way here. So, so you kind of line up, you see this line here? That lines up with that line. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to cover all the green areas right now. So there's three of those bolts that are showing, so we should make sure three of them are showing here. All right, so this will all go brown. Okay, so the green here, it uh, kind of comes off there. So you can see that it's sort of proud, like above the surface here, like it's kind of like a mound. And that's what you want, because when you go to spray, you don't want a sharp edge per se. So you can see here, that this has got to go black here. So we'll have to uh, maybe take a toothpick or something like that. And you can move things around a bit, right? So that goes in very sharply there, like that. right there okay and the brown it should maybe come up a bit more but you want to line it up with what you've already done up top so you don't need to be too anal but you can uh, you can move it around and get it approximately where you want so you can see here this has got to go brown here so where we can protect the green is right in here. So there's that little ventilator here. So you can see Put that on there like that. This stuff is somewhat sticky, but it isn't really sticky. So you want to match up with what you've done before, like I said before. Anyway, you get the idea, and I'm just gonna cut it there for now, and we'll be back when I get a little bit more done.
this comes down like that. You should just buy an airbrush. It's easier. <laughs> All right. So that is black. So now I want a piece in here like that. So that'll have to come over there. up there and see what's going on. I know you're all probably going, are you crazy doing it this way? But yeah, this is, this is what you got to do kind of, I guess, for if you're going to be using spray bombs. This is not how I would do it if I was using an airbrush. So there's two black there, so that looks good. But I think that's black. That comes up into here like that. Push that down a little bit so that I can come back. So you've got this join there. Oh no, here we are, okay. It gets confusing. So that's black. Right there. So you can come back in here and push this stuff out of the way. Maybe a toothbrush is better, not toothbrush, but toothpick. So you're trying to copy that area there, All right? So now you can spray that black. All right, I'll be back. So there you go. Everything is on there now. So everything that I've got in this gray putty is going to stay a green, right? The green color. So you get the idea. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the brown, psh, psh, psh. but like 90 degrees, I don't go down. I just go straight. So yeah, I'm going to mask off all this and anything else that needs to get masked off. And then I'll come back to you and show you the finished result. So there, we've got the brown on. So now we got to mask off the brown and then do the black.
All right, so now we're ready to go along with the black. So you can see the brown matches up there. And uh, so that should have been covered better. <laughs> oh well. Okay, let's go spray the black now. We'll come back. Okay, let's take this stuff off here now. Let's see what we get. Yeah, so. You can see that it's not as soft edged as the other stuff. But you got the pattern there, I guess. So to speak, so yeah, you can just take this stuff, you can knead it all back together again. And then you can reuse it. So far from perfect but you get the idea <laughs> I'm kind of rushing through it just because I want to get this done but you get the idea